I would like to introduce Alan O'Hare. Alan is a storyteller, a Shanaki. He tells stories and collects them and weaves them in the ancient Celtic tradition. Alan has said that stories are in my bones and soul and were there in utero, I'm sure, and I've loved them all, even the ones that caused a bit of sadness or sorrow. He grew up in Dorchester, and he grew up with his father bringing home boarders to stay with them, and his mother cooking the meals, and he and his twin brother, who would love to run and play outdoors and create magic stories, also loved to sit at the feet of the boarders and hear their stories and collect them through the years. Alan went on to live in a seminary with 100 brothers, and he said that he saved up a world of stories during the period of silence there at the seminary, writing and discovering the beauty of the written word. He is a creator of over 20 plays and 50 original stories, and he said that he has awakened tales from countless people in communities regionally and nationally. He's worked for a number of years as a co-director at the Girls Center, uh, which was a center for uh, girls after school programs celebrating voices and vision of women and girls. He's worked as university director and is director of Life Story Theater. He has a book coming out in May, which he is patiently waiting for and notes it's either coming in May or the next ice age, whichever comes sooner. <laughs> and finally, I'd like to share one more quote by Alan, who said that stories are a reflection of who each one of us is, for we are all stories, body, mind, heart, and soul from our ancestors and descendants with everything that we have experienced, and our stories will go on forever. And I very much look forward to hearing what Alan O'Hare has to share with us. Please give him a warm round of applause, Alan O'Hare. If you ever go across the sea to Ireland, then maybe at the closing of your day, you will sit and watch the moon rise over Clodagh or see the sun go down on Galway Bay. Cade Milfeltshire. Cade Milfeltshire means a hundred thousand blessings, a hundred thousand welcomes to you all. And to all who are part of you that are here too. Not just you sitting in these chairs, but all that you carry with you in your bodies, minds, hearts, and souls because we are not alone. Even when we are in the most lonely places, we are not alone. Today, this weekend, is a time, at least in the Celtic tradition, of honoring an ancient hero named Patrick. And so you'll see all these festi festivities taking place about Patrick, 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 Patrick. And it's become distorted over the years. For me, I want to share the stories of Patrick that celebrates people's lives, people's inner hearts. We're going to go home. We're going to go home to another Patrick, to home to where my father Patrick grew up on an island called Deer Island, on the River Fergus. Uh, just off County Clare. Lovely place. So we're going to go out there by boat shortly. But this journey is not only to Deer Island and to Ireland. It is a story about leaving home and finding home. So it's a story that involves all of us. It's a story inspired by the poetry that Misha has just shared. It is the story of Vietnam. It is the story of Afghanistan. It is the story of Pakistan. It is the story of Jamaica. 
It is the story of McPhee Island up in Nova Scotia. It is the story of Poland, Switzerland, Italy, Rwanda, Haiti. So I will tell you a story about Patrick on Deer Island. But it is a story about leaving that all people have experienced at one time or another. And 200 years from now, when we are colonized on Mars, we'll be remembering the time we left this place and wondering how we get back. It is where home is. And home is what Thich Nhat Hanh said. Our true home is in the present moment. And to live in the present moment is a miracle. The miracle is not to walk on water. The miracle is to walk on the green earth in the present moment, to appreciate the peace and beauty that are available now. Peace is all around us, in the world, in nature, and within us, in our bodies, our minds, and hearts, and spirits. Once, once we learn to touch this peace, we will be healed and transformed. It is not a matter of faith. It is a matter of practice. So with the guiding hands of Thich Nhat Hanh, we will journey out to Deer Island. Deer Island, you can see it. If you look closely, it's about three quarters of a mile off the coast of Ballynacally. And there's a boat, a rowboat, that'll take us out. With all my brothers and sisters, my father's brothers and sisters, and all the other children from Deer Island. Because on Deer Island, there are only seven families that live there. And in the seven families, there are seven children. And Deer Island happens to be a part of a collection of islands which number in seven. So it is a perfect synchrony and balance and life is good. Except that in Ireland, for 900 years, we have not owned this land. Now we do. For 900 years, it was not our land. Deer Island was a place stocked with deer that once a year, those who owned us came to hunt. And they would hunt the deer, tracking the deer down and killing the deer. But the ritual was at the end of the second day, they would leave one deer alive. The deer would go on and live forever. And if you look closely as we travel on Deer Island today, you may see signs of that deer still. That was a time, wasn't it? I remember it well, yes, I do, I do, I do, I do. You have to know this about a shanaki. The, the next thing we'll be doing is I'm asking you to move all your chairs around in a circle because a shanaki doesn't talk alone by himself. It's all of us in voices. So I'm going to ask you all to stand up now and just move all your chairs and gather up here around the stage and we'll all just sit here and chat for a while. No, no, it's, it's okay. You people in the booth and all that, it's not, we're not going to do that. That's just, it's just, it's just fanciful talk, you know. It's like the Shanakis do get carried away, so uh, you can put the leashes back. You know, it's like we're, we're safe. But it is true that for 900 years, we had to be careful about what we said and did. So we designed our own language, which didn't make a lot of sense to others. But if you grew up in the Irish tradition, or the, uh, the Sioux tradition, or the Vietnamese tradition, we each all had their own language. So that when the strangers came, they would walk away saying, these people are strange, aren't they? So here we are, with my father and his family rowing the boat, the kids, back home from school to Deer Island. Ah, oh, it's wonderful. You have to know this about uh, River Fergus. There's a lot of storms on it. And when the storms take place, the children on the island don't go over to school. So growing up in Ireland was actually a wonderful treat because 
there's lots of winds and storms in Ireland. <laughs> so you wake up in the morning, and if you're a little lad, you're praying for the good storm this morning so you can stay home and play, with the, 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 play in the fields. Or even work the fields. That's fine. But going to school, you sit and you go over these words. Some of them are interesting words, but you can create many more words out there in the nature. Hmm. Dear Island, three quarters of a mile, and you land and you put your hand down on the soil when you get to the, the shoreline and you touch it. And when you're touching it, you're touching all the others who have been there on that island. And you can feel their pulse, and you can feel your heart. My father's family is ready to move now. They've been there for many years. It is 1898, and they're ready to move, leave the other families. It has been a difficult winter. In October of last year, 11-year-old Eileen, Ellen, passed away. She developed a croup. Uh, the doctor came out to visit, but there wasn't enough to take care of her. They cared for her. The priest came and gave her the final blessings. But it was sad. And then we, Peter, born maybe six months earlier, couldn't make it through the winter. So in the space of eight months, two of the children were gone. It changes everything. It changes the sense of innocence and possibility. And Deer Island didn't have the same meaning anymore. Ah, it was sad it was. They packed up all their belongings, brought them down to the shoreline, everything that they had which wasn't very much. Everybody had one set of clothes for the day-to-day -day living and one for burial or going to church. And then just a couple of sticks of furniture that they put and lined it up on the beach, waiting for the boats the next morning to come get them. My father Patrick, a dreamer, a story collector. It was wonderful. He woke up in the middle of the night and he decided he wasn't going to leave there. He would leave the, with the family the next morning, but he wouldn't leave his whole self. They would, that part of him, a part of him would stay there. Now, in the Celtic tradition, there's a game called Leap to the Deer. Leap to the Deer was in response to the, the people that came, the noble people that came and hunted the deer. The Leap to the Deer was to leap far enough that you would be the one deer that would sa be saved. So what the children would do is they would find these big ravines, three feet, four feet, five feet across, and they would run in large circles and then they would leap. And as they're leaping, leap to the deer, leap to the deer, we're free, we're free, we're free. And then they'd land on the other side, or sometimes they'd all pile in the middle of the, the ravine and laugh on top of each other. And for that moment, they were free in the excitement of it all. So it is two o'clock in the morning. The stars are shining brightly, and there's a crescent moon up there. And my father is out there in the fields by himself. He's age 11 and he was leaving home. And he ran in circles, crying and weeping and wailing and yelling and screaming at the top of his lungs. Running, running, running. And he found a ravine that was 12 feet across. He had never jumped something like this, especially at this age. And he ran and ran and ran in these circles and circles and circles. And then took off. 
leap to the deer and I'll be free and I'll be free and I'll be free and I'll be free. And he landed on the other side and rolled and rolled and then stood up yelling and screaming and laughing and weeping. He knew he was free. He never told the story to anybody. But when I visited his home, it was there. He was gone, but his voice was still there telling me, make sure you tell them the story about Leap to the Deer. Hmm. Each of us, each of us has a dream and each of us can leap to the deer. For the strangers came and tried to teach us their way. They scorned us just for being what we are. But they might as well go chasing after moonbeams or light a penny candle with a star. And if there is going to be a life hereafter, and somehow I am sure there's going to be, I will ask my God to let me make my heaven in that dear land across the sea of dreams. Rejoice in this moment and the high will show you the way. It's not far to travel if you who will love me today so accept my miracle and expect it always oh let your love shine bright on those you who meet this day rejoice in this moment and I will show you the way Last week he came to me while I was pulling my, on my clothes, getting ready for the day ahead. He had an outstretched hand with something in his palm. He told me with some urgency that we had to find a safe place for it so I wouldn't lose it. Now I could see a curled up white goose feather, maybe from a pillow or his comforter. He pulled it he pulled open a few of my vanity drawers and then went and put it gently on my bedside table. And in his sweetest five-year-old voice, he said, when you are here and I am not, when you are missing me, you can look at this feather and think of me. Today, you race to your nursery school classroom with a new book to show your friends. They huddled around you as you turned the pages and remarked about the illustrations. It came from behind between you and Sam to wish you a happy day. Without looking back, you pushed me away. You were with your boys and I was on my way. Then I heard, Mom, and you handed me the bookmark that was tucked in the pages. Mom, your bookmark. And then you were back to your boys. How unexpected in little ways you were going out on your own and I, in my room, hold your feather, doing exactly as you told me. I am missing you.
The race is operating through the midnight. Look out your window. You can see the figure's giant size that move slow motion through the lamplight. And something haunting in their rhythm and their sureness. And something peculiar in their vulnerability of slowness and something strange about their flesh that everyone goes out their door to put a sword through and it does not scream but it keeps moving the procession of isolate eyes on the highway bearing gifts to no destination having no rest they come to a doorway they recognize it it has been taught to them through the endless midnights. And the stove will be on, and what they brew there is a giant rest of a drink, spreading warmth, burning along the tongue like brandy made of fire of many colors. And the chairs that rock there are of fine wood carved with many faces and the ultimate shapes lie on the table, and the masks are taken off, and the flesh returns to wholeness, and the sun shines boundless, restoring through the window, and the eyes open wide and of many colors, for the lenses have been lifted off them, and the books are there, blank embroidered books waiting to be filled. And the, pe and the pens are silver filigree feathers from the market on the bridge over the slow river. There is time now to let the tears flow and the songs rise and the pens flow long as the breath comes in and the limbs dance and the water, air, and fire remain. was stuck in the sand I said captain captain what shall we do he answered with a rub of his chin we just have to wait for the river to rise before the paddle wheel can spin and the river flows sight of that unmoving helpless boat with only the stars to light my way in the silence of that quiet night I rejoiced in the path I had chosen to follow held on and took in the sights sounded and rain poured down cold and hard and fast 
I heard a Joe motor chugging behind me. A whistle gave a shrieking blast. The boat pulled abreast, all lit up and dry. I could see the people having their fun. <clears throat> but I did not call out, didn't even try. Content with the path I was on. And the river carries her travelers in the style they are willing to buy. But for each one, no matter the comfort, the trip is over in the blink of an eye. And the river flows on and on and on. The river flows on. The river flows on and on and on. The river flows on. Thank you.